John and Mary Patterson left the train at Fratton Station, Portsmouth at three minutes past seven. They decided not to take a taxi to the new Theatre Royal immediately to celebrate their wedding anniversary at a local pub first. They toasted their 25 years of marriage. Looked forward to the years ahead together. They held hands as they walked to Fratton Station for a taxi to the new Theatre Royal. Daniel Goodyear stood outside of his house in Napier Road, Portsmouth. He discovered that Helen, his wife, had been having an affair with Tony, his best friend. Angry, upset and confused, Daniel unlocked his car. He had an urge to drive. He drove along Goldsmith Avenue towards Fratton Bridge. Who's that I can hear? This is my granddad. Who's he talking to? Just himself. Where's well, he a nutter or something? <laughs> no, he's just old. Old? Yeah. And he's blind. Blind? Yeah. When did he go blind? Get oh, off. Ugh, you've got dandruff. What? No, I haven't. I'm a hairdresser for fuck's sake. Don't you think I know dandruff when I see it? Our phone rang. It was Helen. His hopes rose. Did she want to stay with him after all? Had she changed her mind about leaving him? He had to find out. At 7.38, Helen said she was sorry. The affair with Tony was over. At 7.39, John and Mary Patterson crossed the approach room to Fratton Railway Station. At 
die in ten seconds. John and Mary Patterson are dead in the road. Who looks after him? No one. He looks after himself. What's he like? Old. I've told you. I want to see him. What for? Because I do. If you don't let me see him, I'm not going to stay. Why? Because I'm not. Take it or leave it. <sighs> Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl. I mean it. I'm not. Granddad, I've um, I've brought a girl back. Don't you say it like that. Her name's Cheryl. Hello. Pleased to meet you. I'm Cheryl. Can I get you anything, Granddad? It's like he's looking at me. Did you want a drink or something? It's like he can see me. Fancy a cup of tea, Granddad? What are you doing? Seeing if he blinks. He's not going to blink, is he? He's blind. Cheryl, for fuck's sake. I want to stay. You've had your look now. Let's go. Cheryl! Let go. If John and Mary Peterson are caught a taxi to the new Theatre Royal, instead of having a drink at a local pub, they would have been in the theatre by 7.20. 40 minutes before the play started. And time to have drinks to celebrate their wedding anniversary. And they would still be alive. What's he talking about? Sounds like a story or something. It's just what he does. What do you mean? He, um, pieces things together. What things? He says that he can see things. What do you mean? Sometimes he gets these pictures. What are you talking about? You're not making any fucking sense. Forget about it. No, I don't want to forget about it. Tell me. I, I don't want to talk about it. Tell me, I said. I'm going. Cheryl. Cheryl, don't go. Hey, 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 Cheryl, Cheryl. I asked you to tell me about it and you won't. There's nothing to tell. Yeah, there is. Forget it, you said. Forget what? Look, if I tell you, you'll stay. I might do. And will. Yeah. All right, if I feel like it. OK, so five years ago, my grandma, she died of cancer. And? The f before the funeral, my mum and dad were due to go on holiday to Spain. And... And what? Well, my granddad was really cut up about my grandma, obviously, and he asked them to change their flights to a week later. And so they did. And then all 255 passengers on board died. Oh, no. Yeah. So, ever since then... What? Ever since then, what? <laughs> he says that he gets these pictures, like how it all interacts. You mean...? I don't know how he does it. Neither does he. I said, Grandad, how? How do you know? And he says, I just know. <laughs> Then he turns the radio on and hears the news. Why? Why does he turn the radio on and hear the news? You mean... Oh, come over cold and shivery. Oh, I'm going home. No, Cheryl. After hearing that, can you blame me? It'll be all right. I don't care. I feel cold as ice. It's OK, I can... Warm you up. Oh, I don't want you to warm me up. When? When did he go blind? What? 
You heard me. When did he go blind, I said? Five years ago, when the plane crashed. Mrs. Miriam Hunter lay in a deep sleep. She had not been sleeping well and took sleeping pills to help. At 11.37 p.m., Harold Stokes, a convicted sex offender, could not believe his luck when he found both the access gate to Mrs. Hunter's house and the back door. Unlocked. One thousand pounds in twenty pound notes lay on the table. Money Mrs. Hunter had drawn from her Lloyd's account to pay the builder for works to her roof. Mrs. Hunter's new partner's daughter, Cheryl, suspected nothing as she entered the house. was dry and so she went to the kitchen for a drink of orange. When to her horror she found Gerald dead on the kitchen floor. She had been strangled. Gerald Baker had stayed with Robert Price, a young man she met in the pub. She would have returned home but two hours later, at 1.30 a.m. on the 16th of March, and at work by 8 a.m. for her first hairdressing appointment. And she would still be alive. <laughs> 